Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to dive into the topic of science of supplementation. So I'm going to go over specific um, ingredients as well as supplements and things that you can do to benefit performance, weight loss, and muscle gain. So let's first dive into creatine. So creatine is the best supplement that you can use to increase lean muscle tissue and increase strength. There are so many studies that have proven its results, so those are mostly on creatine monohydrate. And with creatine, sorry my nose itches, with creatine monohydrate, what you do have to watch out for is water retention. So you might see an increase in the scale, and this is normal, and this will either stay the same or decrease back to normal. Um, you can also take creatine hydrochloride. There are also other different creatine types. Um, creatine hydrochloride is what PE Science sells. That's what I'm going to start taking. So creatine has amazing benefits. Proven best supplement that you can use if you want to increase your strength or your muscles. Next, we are going to go into branched chain amino acids. So branched chain amino acids are amino acids that are the building blocks of protein that can be used in order to increase your recovery and what they will not do is increase your gains. So even though amino acids are the building blocks of protein, you do not need branched chain amino acids if you get in your daily protein intake. Now what you can use branched chain amino acids for are making sure that you hit your muscle protein syn synthesis thresholds. So to spike your muscle protein synthesis, you need to intake approximately 5 grams of leucine. And this can be in the form of protein from food, protein in whey. And what I personally like to do, I just want to make sure I fully stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So with that, I take two scoops of this, which is 5 grams of leucine. If I'm worried about that, you can also take it to put, I find in myself that I am able to push harder and train in the gym because for some people it can help with endurance. So branched chain amino acids are good for making sure you hit those MPS thresholds and as long as you get your daily protein intake in, you don't have to worry about supplementing with branched chain amino acids as long as you hit those thresholds. So going from branched chain amino acids to protein, you do not need a whey protein um, supplement if you get your daily protein needs in. However, the effects and the quality of this protein will make sure that you fully stimulate muscle protein synthesis. It's also great for digestion and there are various studies shown that mixing a casein in a whey blend, so casein is going to digest slowly, is better for gaining muscle than just whey or um, other sources. So when you have different sources of protein, say you have a vegetarian source of protein or you have um, egg yolks, with that, you have different bioavailability, meaning um, those proteins in that food is not automatically going to go straight into your muscles. It has to go into digestion, and some of it is not going to go into your tissues. So with bioavailability, your best bet is whey protein. Another ingredient that can help with gaining muscle has been shown to be betaine. And betaine is kind of the new creatine. It does not have as much research, but betaine is found in organine from PE Science. It's found in various other supplements. And betaine, at here, they have 2,500 milligrams. So my suggestion if you are looking for a supplement with betaine is making sure that you get um, 2,500 milligrams to about 5 milligrams. Pre-workouts, how can they benefit your muscle and your performance? So first let's talk about nitric oxide boosters. These are used to increase the flow of oxygen and the blood flow in your muscles. Not only can they help to give you an amazing pump, but they can help with your strength. So specifically, L-citrulline is becoming not only a pump product, but is becoming a product that you can use for strength. And that dosage is 6 grams. So 
When you're looking at high volume, this dosage, two scoops, is used for pump. If you want the benefits of L-citrulline, you should either supplement with just L-citrulline or go for three scoops of this. Now, when also looking at the ingredients, you will notice that L-citrulline and arginine are both two um, precursors to nitric oxide. So, when you're picking a nitric oxide booster, you need to look at L-citrulline, not arginine, because L-citrulline is going to be, with a mix of L-arginine, that is going to produce the best effects. L-citrulline, look for four milligrams or above, so four to six, never below, because then you are just getting an under dosage of it. I had also mentioned creatine, and for creatine products, you want five milligrams. You can do three to five milligrams. The best bet is five milligrams a day. Another supplement that you can use for performance, immunity, and increasing lean muscle gains is a zinc magnesium supplement. This is what I use, ZMA by B Science. So when you use a um, ZMA product, what you're doing is you are not getting to sleep earlier or better. This helps promote REM sleep. And sleep is essential for proper um, hormone production and regulation, uh, recovery, immunity. So zinc is also great for immunity and so is magnesium, which magnesium plays a major role in hormone regulation and creation. So you have all of this plus you have shilogic, which is fulvic acid, um, which can not only help with antioxidants but it can help to increase your FSH and it can increase your testosterone. So various studies done on that. The biggest benefits to ZMA to me are getting full REM sleep. I also see that if I take this, I am less likely to get sick because of the zinc and I am less sore because, because of the better recovery. Two important supplements that I highly suggest are using a probiotic and a fish oil. So I suggest these for everybody. No matter what your goal is, probiotics help in digestion, regulation of gut bacteria, and that is essential, especially with the amount of processed foods that we eat and the toxins and all these different um, pesticides, herbicides, arm, fruits, fruits and vegetables. It's essential that we have healthy gut bacteria. So make sure you take a probiotic. This is my favorite ever. I highly suggest you use a science-based backed up brand. Do your research. I always like Renew Life. Fish oils, amazing. Make sure you get proper DHA and EPA, so 750 milligrams of each. Um, I always suggest at least 1,000 milligrams of fish oil a day. Now let's talk fat burners. I know that there are many fat burners on the market and some ingredients do actually have benefits and do work, but you have to be careful because a lot of them are underdosed or they contain mixtures, so trying to trick you on underdosage, or they just don't work. So let's first go into green tea. So green tea, um, it's not the green tea itself, but it's the ECEG in the green tea that helps produce that fat loss. So how green tea works is it has mRNA upregulation and enzyme inhibition. So this increases fat oxidation, increases your energy expenditure. That's how it works and that is also how caffeine works. So with green tea, you want to probably consume a good amount of ECEG, and this means that you don't need to drink a bunch of green tea. You have to make sure that you take in green tea from a pure form. So 400 to 500 milligrams a day is what science shows for a benefit. Caffeine, the different um, levels on the intake vary per person. I never suggest more than 400 milligrams at a time for anyone. It has, I know some people, even around 100 milligrams makes them sick. So you really have to be careful with caffeine, but caffeine is an amazing fat burner. Another ingredient that can help with fat loss is L-carnitine because carnitine is used in fat metabolism. So I normally suggest 
a thousand milligrams of L-carnitine and this is for both people who are not looking for fat loss because it'll help with fat metabolism and for fat loss because it will help with that process. Yohimbi and forskolin are two other ingredients that can help with fat burning. Forskolin is in both PE Science Shift and I believe it is in um, Erase Pro as well, don't quote me on that. Uh, Yohimbi used to be in PE Science Norcadrine. Um, Yohimbi is gr a great fat burner, but it does have severe side effects for certain individuals. Like me, I cannot take it. It causes anxiety problems and also causes heart palpitations in some people and blood pressure issues. So you just have to outweigh the benefits, look at the safety, and be careful. Now, with any supplement, you have to make sure that you do your research. So say, you, before you go into the store, you need to make sure you know what you're buying. Don't let that person selling you that supplement tell you that it's good for you and that it works. No, 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 no. Do your research. So, my suggestion is go on examine.com, look up every single ingredient, and make sure that you look at the safety and the effects. Make sure that you look at the proper dosage. So, say you go into a supplement store and you see a supplement that has what? says it's going to increase your performance and your lean muscle tissue. And all it has is three grams of L-citrulline, two grams of creatine, one gram of agmatine, and let's say it has L-carnitine. So, the dosages on those are awful. You would want three to five grams of creatine, you would want at least four grams of L-citrulline, agmatine, you would want one gram, so just, you have to look at the dosage, know what works, and do your research because you can't just be spoon-fed information. You, you just can't. You have to make sure you research. So, examine.com is my favorite. It is the best to use. Um, the problem with looking at research articles is because a lot of them are not peer-reviewed and they can be biased or they have terrible study methods. So I have done a um, research, how to interpret research podcast on Uplift Fit Nutrition. You can check that out if you want. That'll kind of help you figure out research articles and how to read research. But examine.com is an awesome, awesome resource. So there are some fat burner ingredients that work, but you have to be careful and do your research because a lot of them are just a glorified caffeine pill. And you can save money by just going to a store and actually getting a caffeine pill. So save your money, do your research, and just make sure that you take care of your body because supplements are never necessary. They can only aid and help you towards your goals. You have to make sure that you have nutrition and you have your training slash cardio on point and ready to go. So I hope this video was helpful and maybe I can do another video on what supplements are a waste of money. So just let me know if that is something you guys would want. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in my next video.